What's up everyone? Today I'm going to be playing some Mono Ice. I haven't really touched ice too much since the DLC came out. I actually probably main, I'd say I mained ice back in Generation 7 and it was really bad but I really enjoyed it. And I said the start of Generation 8 in Mono Types was amazing. I honestly think it might have been one of the best types pre-DLC. Post-DLC it really didn't gain much at all. It got Triple Axle. I don't think it's a great move, maybe a bit unreliable. Um, but I'm just going to try out I see how it kind of it kind of goes. Um, disclaimer, I am recording this in the middle of the night where I live, so if I sound tired or quiet, that's why. And um, if I make any mistakes, I'm going to blame being tired. I'm joking, if I make mistakes, that's my own fault. Uh, I don't take make excuses like that. So we're going to jump into the team. Um, it's similar to the team I used pre-DLC. The only difference is Curum Black got banned. Um, I think that was a good thing personally. I think Curum Black was too good in monotypes. So I actually was one of the people supporting the ban of Curum Black despite how much I did like Ice Type. So uh, we're going to go into the team here. We have a little Nine Tails is your typical Veil Setter with Light Clay. Also comes with Snow Warning, which is helpful for my team. Uh, encore to trap setups, especially like hazard starters or um, boosters, just to trap them into that. Freeze dry because it's so good against um, water types, especially it hits water ground types, water flying types, uh, water dragons four by effectively, which would either hit, hit them one by effective otherwise. So that's really good against the water mono. And moon blast is really good stop, especially against fighting types. Uh, next up we have. Darmanitan Galarian form because honestly you don't need to think when you have Galar Darmanitan on your team. It kind of just comes in clicks buttons. Um, Gorilla Tactics is this built in choice band along the choice scarf so off the bat we are basically plus one speed and plus one attack. So we have U-turn to keep momentum or to uh, kind of hopefully threaten kind of intimidate threats and just like U-turn off them and get into a different Pokemon. On the swap, we have Flare Blitz to do with Steel types, especially like Ferrothorn, because my team hates doing with Ferrothorn. So that's quite nice. Uh, Icicle Cross is just great stab and has the chance to flinch, which can really clutch games. And finally, we have Earthquake, which is nice against um, Rock types, Steel types, um, and Fire types, actually, which is super good. So that's nice in the Fire mono, especially if Charge is taken care of, you can kind of just kill and click Earthquake. Next up we do have Curum, so Curum Black was banned. Uh, Curum Black used to use a lot of Dragon Dance sets, was probably the biggest set to use in Monos. So we're going to try a Specs regular Curum, who still has pretty impressive special attack. 130 before Specs is quite nice. Uh, 317 speed is decent. Um, freeze Dry, as I said earlier for Ninetales, just fantastic against the Water match matchup. Draco Meteor is just really strong stab. Um, so that's nice to have, especially with specs boosted. Uh, Blizzard seems unreliable and I think most people might run Ice Beam and maybe for the better it's only 20 base weaker. But I want to try Blizzard because I do have a hail from Alolan Ninetales so if I swap in on the hail, the Blizzard does bypass the uh, accuracy check and gets that, that bit of extra oomph to the attack. And it's significantly stronger than Freeze Dry. And finally we have Earth Power which is just good coverage against like Earthquake and Darmanitan. Good against steel types, uh, rock types, fire types, the likes. Uh, so Curum's good against fire because it takes neutral damage thanks to its dragon typing and the earth powers could really threaten things like Torkoal, Cinderace, things that give my team trouble, especially Bond of Ale. Next up we have Avalog. Avalog is my spinner with Sturdy and the new heavy duty boots is a fantastic combination for Avalog so it can come in on hazards, not care, because it's still going to be 100% HP. So we can take a hit guaranteed, assuming it's not Mold Breaker or Multi-Hit, for example. And um, with its ridiculous defense stat and decent hit, like very good HP, it can live um, almost any physical attack, even boosted ones. It can click Recover in their face and just get that back. Um, body Press is, it uses your defense instead of your attack and damage calculation, for those who don't know what it does. So that's going to be fantastic for um, just clicking Body Press with a 513 base power, base, or 513 base instead of a 239 base, which is super nice. And um, I'm actually going to max out its attack just to get that tiny bit more chip and rapid spoon. You never know, it could be the difference between a game. We do take more foul play damage, but negligibly, so 
Why aren't you 31? I just said it's 31. So does that stay? Why isn't it 1031? Uh, maybe we have it 4. It really does not seem to want to say this. Uh, this is 31. Okay, it stayed that time. And Mirror Coat is for if hit by a special attack returns double damage. That's super good because this thing is going to die to any special attack essentially. But it will guarantee live with sturdy. And you can just click Mirror Coat and absolutely obliterate anything it hits. Uh, it's sort of always in 1 HP. It's pretty much gone for the game then, but it's still super nice to uh, to take care of something, especially like maybe a boosted Volcarona who's getting out of hand. I can just click Mirror Coat on its face. Next up we do a Frostmoth. Frostmoth is actually my specially defensive wall. Um, it's 279 special defense. Probably looks terrible on paper, but thanks to Icy Scales it actually half damage from special attacks, which is super good. And it's decent speed tier, can be boosted nicely with Quiver Dance, which also makes it even more of a special threat. It doesn't have access to Great Recovery, doesn't have Leftovers or Roost, so uh, I am running Giga Drain. Also fantastic against ground types, or sorry, water types. My team doesn't struggle with ground types, hopefully. Um, we have Ice Beam, just for the good coverage. I might change to Hurricane, depending on how much the fighting matchup is, is doing to me. We'll see. And then we have Bug Buzz, which is just nice too. It's just nice strong stab and it hits dark types, psychic types, and goes through substitutes, which my team can have a bit of trouble with. So next up we have Weavile as a choice band, max speed Weavile. So with the choice band, it hits pretty impressive levels of power. And we're trying out the new triple axel. So what triple axel does is it powers up every time it connects, but unfortunately it does have a chance of missing with every uh, concurrent hit. So not the most reliable, but when it does hit three stab triple axles, it's going to really hurt the opponent. Goes through sashes, goes through sturdy. So that's super nice. Next up we have Ice Shard. Um, Ice Shard is just kind of a late game. In case like, oh if I click Ice Shard twice now I win, especially banded stab. So it could be used as a late game clean up if I really need to outspeed something like a Choice Scarf user for example. And my Dimmer Hand is dead. Oh, my frost moth is dead and my, my, my speed control is gone you know i do have the priority knockoff is a super strong uh, great team support as well especially it's stab and banded from weavile so that's going to be scoring some nice ko's and finally we have psycho cut kind of a strange move it's only 70 base power but it does hit fighting type super effectively so i don't know if i'm going to keep this i'm going to see how it works and um, maybe if it doesn't work i can change to something like poison jab for fairies perhaps um but that's the team and I'm going to pause there and I'll come back when I find a game. So I found a game and it is against Mono Water. Um, so Mono Water is a strange matchup. It's kind of like the two of us are going to be fighting for dominance of our weather. So it's actually, it's a good to lead Ninetales here. It kind of scouts for the Pelipper having Scarf if they lead Pelipper. As uh, so ever is faster will activate the weather first. So if I take out nine tails and uh, it rains first and followed by hail, I know the Pelipper's scarfed. If it doesn't, then the Pelipper's not scarfed. But either way, I threaten Pelipper a lot with freeze dry. Nothing on the team really likes to swap into freeze dry. So they do leave Pelipper, and as we see, the hail started first, followed by the rain, which means I am faster. I can't get my veil up, but I can click freeze dry here as Crawdon comes in. It does OK, which is nice. And so Barrascuta comes in good play here because that's probably banded. It also has Swift Swim. So I, I expect maybe a close combat. I think Avalog lives a close combat. Uh, I hope Avalog lives a close combat. Ooh, it does a lot of damage, more than I was hoping for. And unfortunately that actually threatens my entire team. If that's banded, I'm gonna run a quick check to see if Ninetales lives that, if that's banded. Because it is neutrally effective, not as a Lola uh, Barrascuta. So we're going to go for a choice band. Oh, what? Oh, that's a different format. Barrascuta, might have Rain Sweeper. That's choice band, close combat. So it actually does not kill Nine Tails, which means I can come out and click um, Freeze Dry in this thing's face. Again, they don't really have a swap into Freeze Dry. I want to get my veil up, but in case they go up, actually, 
No, because this is too much of a threat. I can't let this thing live. So unfortunately, I do have to click freeze dry. But again, that shouldn't kill if it's banded without a crit. Oh, that's 252 HP nine tails. Uh, I may have made a very big mistake. So there's actually a 50-50 if this KOs. I didn't, thankfully. So that was very stupid of me. I should have read the EVs here before committing to that. Um, Rotom Wash comes out. I think I preserve my nine tails just in case. So I'm going to go cure him here in case maybe he wants to trick me. I see Thunder Waves, good play, but I just click Freeze Dry again and this gets a KO. Unfortunately I am paralyzed, but I click Freeze Dry, I don't think Pelipper can Oak on me. Maybe if he Hurricanes, as I'm still faster, that is a slow Pelipper. So now I do actually win the Weather War here, which should give me the game, I think. So he probably wants to Draco here. I see Hydro Pump, so it doesn't even KO. Um, that scores a KO easily. So what Size My Toad presumably does here is he wants to go for a Stealth Rock to kill my Ninetales, so I'm actually going to swap into Ninetales, as he does Forfeit. So the plan was there to swap into Ninetales, and um, if they go for the Stealth Rock, I would have lived, because my Spinner is dead. If they just KO'd me, I have plenty of items, things to deal with, these two. Especially because the rain's gone, so it's swift to be gone. So that's that game. I'm going to pause there till I find another game. So we have the next game, and it is against Mono Fairy. So uh, I can see this one definitely being tough. Azumarill is a tough customer to deal with. Um, Klefki as well. Even Togekiss. Even though it is weak to ice, it can still just click like Aura Sphere, Flamethrower against me. So I'm not exactly sure how to play this, how to start off this game. I'm going to start off... I don't want to start off something that is crippled too much by T-Wave. So... I'm actually going to go Weave out turn 1. As they go Togekiss. So if they are Scarf, they can click Aura Sphere or Ice. Or Air Slash against me. I'm going to go try to go for Triple Axel. As they're not Scarf, please connect. So that connects, and it takes care of Togekiss, which is definitely a threat to my team. So that's not bad. So Klefki comes out here, but... My fear is Klefki sets up screens and goes into Azumarill and clicks Belly Drum, which is very bad for me, so I'm actually going to go in Ninetales here and set up my own screens. It's exactly what I expected to happen. So I'm going to set up my own screens. I presume maybe a T-Wave comes out here. As a light screen comes up. So I'm going to click Encore. So I Encore the spikes coming out. So this is dangerous for me now. I don't have a strictly fantastic answer to anything on their team. I'm going to go Curum because Earth Power does decent damage. So they're going to get their spikes up uncontested, unfortunately. I'm actually going to click Blizzard here as Hatterene comes out. So Hatterene definitely easily eats that. Uh, I'm going to click Blizzard again. Hopefully it doesn't miss. It does miss. That's Blizzard for you. I shouldn't be running Blizzard. <laughs> That's my own fault. So they're going to start setting up calm mines in my face. I'm going to actually go try a very risky thing and spin on this, as he does a Draining Kiss, which actually does very little damage. So once that Reflect is gone, Weavile should be able to click Triple Axel and score a KO here. If they swap into Mimikyu, expecting the Rapid Spin, very good play. And unfortunately, I actually have no way of threatening Ghosts. So this is the last turn of its Reflect. Maybe it goes for a Mystical Fire here and KOs me. But I think I'm actually faster. As I do believe they are the min speed for Trick Room. 
So Azumarill is definitely still a big threat if that clicks Belly Drum. Uh, it actually really damages my team. Kyurem will be able to live in Aqua Jet. And Revenge Q at Freeze Dry. As they go for Psychic, which surprisingly doesn't actually KO. So I can actually click Recover in its face. As they go for another Psychic. So this is going to be... I'm going to hit Recover again. Expecting them to calm mind this turn. Oh. Okay, my Veil. Was, that makes sense, my Veil. So what my plan there was to click Recover again on the calm mind and then Mirror Coat them back. But I wasn't thinking about the Veil at the time. So I actually think Frostmath has a decent time setting up. As they go Klefki. So presumably the Klefki wants to set their spikes up again. Or they're just going to go for a light screen here. They could be a T-Wave variant, uh, which is definitely scary for me. As they Feral Play, which does very little damage. So they're not actually T-Wave, so that's nice for me. This is T-Wave for sure. I have no doubt in my mind. But Bug Buzz should Oko here. Oh! As they're not too wet, they are Darkest Lariat. Okay, they look like a banded Darkest Lariat based on the damage they did there. So I can get out Nine Tails and click my Veil. As Hatterene comes out. Assuming they don't go for a Draining Kiss here, they double into Klefki. Which is a good play, so I'm going to knock them. Just lose their light clay, which is good for me. And now it lets them set up spikes again in my face. Unfortunately, both my heavy G boost units are gone. So I think I have to click freeze dry. That's the only thing that can really like deny Azumarill coming in. As they do get all their spikes down, unfortunately. But the freeze dry does deny. Azumarill coming in, as Hatterene comes in. So my Veil is over this turn, so I go Ninetales, and I can't Encore that, but I can get my Veil back up. Perhaps their screens don't have too long left. If I Encore, it bounces back to me, so I'm actually going to roll for the Freeze here as they do Trick Room, which is definitely scary for me. So unfortunately, all I can do here is roll for Freeze. As I do get it, which sucks for them. Uh, very good for me. And I have to go Weavile and hope they stay frozen. And just click Triple Axel, as they do Thaw. So I surprisingly live. Um, this is short of the KO, but it does KO now. Unfortunately, it allows Azumarill to come in quite nicely. Or even Mimikyu. So obviously Mimikyu comes in here, just click Shadow Sneak, scores a KO. It is Lorb. I think my best play is to U-turn off on this. Hope it doesn't. Yeah, go for Shadow Sneak. Break that. Go in Nine Tails and sack it on the Shadow Sneak. On the play rough, sorry. Um, I am worried about Azumarill clicking Belly Drum in my face or even Aqua Jet. So I have to Icicle Crash here. I hope I live a Shadow Sneak, which I do. And please hit. It did hit nice. So they go in Azumarill now and I think click Belly Drum. Maybe they flinch. No, they do click Belly Drum. And I I do live maybe in Aqua Jet, but I still think I lose the game to Grim Snarl. Especially this gotta be Sucker Punch with the banded damage. So close game there. Um Yeah, obviously the banded Sucker Punch comes out there. So very good game there, close game. Unfortunately I did lose. 
Maybe I could have played it better with the Frostmoth. Um, I didn't expect this to be a Banded Grimmsnarl, so that was really cool to see. Um, I'm going to pause it there and look for another game. So it is another fairy team. Is this the redemption I needed from last game? Let's find out. Again, definitely Klefki is dangerous. Uh, I hate Azumarill for the most part. Hatterene proved quite useful in that game too, so... I'm going to open up Weavile expecting a Klefki to come in. As Gardevoir opens up, and it is Scarf to Moonblast, I would assume. Um, so I'm going to go Frostmoth, as it should live that quite nicely. With Ice Skills. Yeah, it does no kind of damage. I click Ice Beam, and whatever comes in, it is Klefki. Hit the crit, which is super nice. Um, not too big. I go back into Weavile in case they want to throw a T-Wave my way. Weavile is important to take care of Hatterene and Guard of Mimikyu though, so I am maybe shouldn't. But I just don't see how Klefki threatens Weavile at all. Unless it's the one like Draining Kiss set. But then I feel they would have swapped it into Klefki. Into um, Frostmoth. I'm, I'm debating if I should swap out Frostmoth. Okay, I'm gonna go Weavile, I'm gonna go up my gut. If they do T-Wave, so they go for a Spike. Um, good play. Triple Axel won't do too much damage, but it definitely uh, should threaten them a bit. It is not very effective, but even still it's banded. And if it hits three times, I missed anyway, so... Um, so obviously they want to get their Spikes down. Triple Axel really proving not reliable right now. As we managed to hit uh, three times there. But to be honest, I am wasting turns of their screens, so it's not all bad for me. Wow, okay. It just does not want to work in my favor. So this thing is dangerous. I have to be careful with this. I think my best play is to get in Curum and click Specs Freeze Dry, but I can Triple Axel in their face first, as I expect a Belly Jump to come out. Oh, I get the crit, which is super nice. Unfortunately, my earlier hits did not hit. That would have been super useful. So now I have to choose something to sack. I think I like Ninetales just for... Actually, knowing you, I don't like Ninetales in this game. I like Dramar more. So that obviously looked like Aqua Jet there. Um, I chipped them down with Hail. A Curum should live a single hit. It's quite bulky, and I click Freeze Dry. Yeah, it lives not nicely, but it does live. And that's kind of the end of Curum. So I click Freeze Dry again. No freeze, unfortunately. But Hatterene's at the point now where Triple Axel should kill. And it really can't recover too much HP off me. Okay. So good play with the Trick Room there. If it's a Draining Kiss variant, that's dangerous for me. Which it is. So I'm going to go Avalug here, and I'm actually going to click Mirror Coat. Which will loco. No questions asked. And I actually should outspeed anything I throw my way. Um, Mimikyu is the best play on their part, so I can rapid spin these away now. As they do flamethrower. So I have to bear in mind I am slower or faster depending. I'm going to risk this. I think after a quiver dance I should live the flamethrower or should I just straight up ice beam? I'm not max special attacks so this won't KO. So I'm going to risk the Quiver Dance. I will live the Flamethrower. Ice Scales is just very good. Hopefully it won't end up costing me the game though. As they go, Klefki. Interesting play. They can throw Spikes down, um, which is definitely within their best interest. So I'm going to try Ice Beam here. As they do Freeze, which is super important for me. Um, it lets me click Quiver Dance again. Mimikyu is definitely a threat to my team, undeniably. 
So yeah, naturally Mimikyu comes out here. With that Frozen, I actually might have a chance with Darmanitan. So I pick Ice Beam again to break his disguise, maybe freeze it. Fingers crossed. Oh my god. Uh, I am actually sorry about that. That really sucks for them. Oh, so they forfeit. I mean, they definitely could have won the game. They could have thought this turn and probably could have, could have, could have killed Frostmoth. So I feel kind of bad, but um, Freeze, it's just something. It's kind of part of the game we play. Like, Pokemon can be complete nonsense with RNG. And fortunately, that kind of RNG really screwed them over. The game wasn't over yet because my game plan was um, after I broke Mimikyu's disguise, I actually think Weavile easily KO'd this with Triple Axel or Knockoff. Um, it outsped and Dermar, Galarian Dermatan outsped all of these threats um, and just clicked Ice Flicker Crash. So, assuming RNG worked in my favour that time, maybe I could have won. So, RNG can be really hit or miss, obviously. Um, and New Place Pokemon understands that. And um, it really didn't work with me earlier on in the game with all those triple axle misses. So, uh, it's kind of a weird one, give and take, I suppose. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm not sure how long this episode was. It felt kind of short to record. Um, hopefully you did enjoy it. My thoughts on Ice is it's definitely not as good as it was prior to the generation. Or prior to the DLC, sorry. Um, maybe I'll run Cloister next time instead of maybe Curum. I'm not sure who I get rid of. But uh, if you have any teams you want me to use, absolutely send them my way. I'd love to use them. I'd love to see them. Um, do follow my Twitter. If you have Twitter, I'll link it in, this, in my, my profile page. As I said earlier, I am going to open a Discord soon, and I've been thinking of streaming some uh, monotype like in-game playthroughs. Maybe start with like Pokemon Emerald or Fire Red Leaf Green, and just pick a type and uh, kind of just casually stream the playthrough. So if you'd be interested in that, do let me know. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care.